What does an ideal regulatory framework look like for, for Ripple and for the digital asset XRP? I just, I just want to give viewers a sense of how it's holding you back. Is it preventing you adding central banks to the platform? Is it preventing customers, particularly international companies, joining the, the payments network too? What specifically is it, is it preventing at this stage? Well, oftentimes when I'm speaking to customers and we're talking to them about our product that uses XRP in the payment flows, they will ask me about the regulatory dynamics. And they, we have had customers say, look, until there is clarity in regulatory frameworks, then we're going to hold off. Now, that has not been the case because of the clarity and the certainty in countries, as I mentioned, like the U.S., excuse me, like the U.K. or the UAE or Switzerland. You do have companies in those markets saying, absolutely, we're supportive, let's move forward. Here in the United States. I just want to quickly come in and state this is a interview between Julia and Brad Gollinghouse and what they basically talk about here is the ongoing situation over in the United States regarding Ripple and why from a certain perspective the XRP product is not being used as much or if there's been any hiccups so what Brad Gollinghouse here explains and rightfully so is Whenever they want to get a partnership going, in the US specifically, they ask the question, well, but what if it turns out to be a security? And the SEC is the entity who kind of guides that and Ripple can only say, well, we don't think it's going to be, but we don't know what the SEC is deciding. A couple of key factors here are that I personally think Ripple will win. I also think that Brad Gollinghouse has been trying to sign with the underlying factor being if it turns out to be a security, you'll get your money back or something like that or will help you out in some way. If we look back, for example, their C round with Tetragon, I believe, yeah, they actually sued Ripple for getting sued by the SEC. They lost, however, because Ripple also decided to kind of uh, come to terms with them and say, if XRP is deemed a security, we'll give you your money back. But as long as it isn't, then nothing has changed. And at the end of the day, a allegation by the SEC doesn't mean too much. But what Brad Gunninghouse goes into right now is explaining in his own words why the USA market is quite critical, but as of this point, it's only a small part of Ripple's business, partially because it's just not really been that far into the whole crypto tobacco. You know, they've not really done their job as properly as some other markets have. And let's continue with this little talk. States, you know, we actually have about 95% of our customers are non-US customers, and only about 5% are here in the US. And people say, well, why, you know, you're a US company, why is that? One of the dynamics is we have US companies who are waiting for clarity, and the clarity really is it emanates from the Securities and Exchange Commission. The, the US SEC said two and a half years ago, almost three really, that Bitcoin was not a security. And then they came out about two months later and said that Ether is not a security. And then they stopped and instead focused their energy on you know, some of the, the bad actors in the ICO market, the initial coin offering. So for us around XRP and the over... I want to quickly come in and state here again that officially, I think that might be the case that they said Bitcoin is fine, ETH is fine. But when you're trying to look back right now and find exactly how they determined Bitcoin or ETH was good to go, it actually becomes rather difficult. Again, you guys have probably seen my videos on the channel here talking about the connections between JP Morgan and Ethereum and MetaMask and whatnot and the entire Ethereum infrastructure. Um, also, the different law firms and the SEC connections to Ethereum and partially Bitcoin as well and why it just doesn't make a lot of sense. But the bottom line here being the clarity that he is here referring to even He's, he's already overstating how clear it is. It really isn't. And I, I understand why he's doing that, just to get like a bottom line in. But guys, it's so confusing, and specifically to him. 100 companies that are working with XRP, getting that clarity and that certainty. It's, it's very clear to me that XRP is being used by many companies as a currency. You had the U.S. Department of Justice refer to XRP as a currency. You've had FinCEN refer to it as a currency. But you haven't yet had that clarity from the U.S. SEC. All right, so that again was... I think enough. It was just to quickly show you guys Brad Gully has a stance in all of this stuff. And I believe that this was the last time that CNN covered the Ripple and the lawsuit and whatnot. But if I'm mistaken, 
let me know down below. It's from a little while ago, but I think it's still rather important, you know, just my thoughts about the situation. Then I promised you guys yesterday that I was going to go over John Deaton's thread where he basically covers the 16 reasons why Ripple has already kind of won, why the SEC has kind of lost from the start, and I think it's going to be interesting. So first of all, all right, we have to go all the way towards the top and we're going to go through everything he's written down, which is going to take a couple of minutes. First of all, let's check this out. 16 facts providing the case is dead on arrival. On February 8th of 2012, Jess Powell and Jed McCaleb received a legal opinion from Perkins Coy, a law firm, informing them if they sell XRP to investors and use the money for operational costs, XRP will likely be an investment contract, aka a security. All right, now before we move on, I want to quickly state, guys, that if you are enjoying these daily crypto videos, make sure you press that like button and appreciate the plant. All right, go see a plant today. Maybe touch a plant. It's a little bit too far for me to touch, but maybe you go outside and touch some grass or something like that. I have another plant right here, which I can just, you know, do a little bit of that stuff with. <laughs> Having said that, make sure you press the like button if you're enjoying these videos and let's move on. After receiving the above legal opinion letter, Chris Larson and Jed McCallop scrap the old business model and instead seek VC funding for business operations. Investors will not receive XRP but instead receive actual shares of stock in the company Ripple. And this is a very key point. Ethereum did it in a way of, okay, you know what, we're going to build a product, Ethereum, we're going to raise money for that with Bitcoin to fund it. Ripple did it split. So basically there's a company and there's a cryptocurrency, and the company has backing. The cryptocurrency is just literally what it is. A cryptocurrency, it's been given away, it's been sold to some people, but not really to fund any of their own, for their own cryptocurrency, operations. Moving on, Larson and McCallum received a second opinion from Perkins Coy on October 19th of 2012. Based on the new business model, they are advised XRP is most likely not a security. And guys, put down below in the comment section when you think the lawsuit is going to be over. Just what month do you think is going to be over or what year? I honestly think it's not going to be further than October of this year, which is still pretty far away, but time flies. I mean, it's already almost halfway through March. Before you know it, we're in October, it's going to be over, and I think, again, we're going to have at least a 10x, but again, that's just my opinion. So, this letter hints at risks related to banking secrecy laws and being labeled as a money service business. So, with a couple of these facts stated already, you might think to yourself, well, if John Deaton can compose this entire list of reasons why the SEC's lawsuit doesn't make sense or why Ripple most likely would just win, then why hasn't the case been thrown out? And that mostly comes down to the fact that the judge can only decide on what she's been presenting in court. And since so she doesn't really use Twitter too much, maybe she does in her personal life, I don't know. But not for the case in, in, in this sense. She's not going to know whatever John Deaton is throwing up here. And as long as it's not asked, not demanded, Ripple's not going to throw it out there either until potentially one of these points comes in where they just put everything together, right? And that will come soon. Now... Again, the letter hints at risks related to bank secrecy laws and being labeled a money service business. In 2015, Ripple was sued by FinCEN, consistent with risks referenced in the legal memo. FinCEN declared a subsidiary of Ripple a money service business and classified XRP as virt... Vert, I don't know why I said that. Convertible virtual currency. Ripple settled for 700000 agreed to register sales with the financial had a big brain fart there. I totally didn't use the internet to look up what FinCEN meant again. Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. Pursuant to the terms of the settlement with the Department of Justice and FinCEN, Ripple agreed to register sales of XRP only through FinCEN, and the agreement forces Ripple to comply with the banking laws of the United States, not the security laws. Now, number five. On June 13th of 2018, SEC lawyers write a legal memo analyzing with respect to XRP as a... Again, the WR, what does it stand for? I thought it was with respect to. It can mean a couple other things, but I, I just think analyzing with respect to XRP is a... It just doesn't seem right. Or maybe with regards, but even then. It, it, lawyers write a legal memo analyzing with regards to XRP, is it, or with regards to XRP as a security, and it does not recommend enforcement. It's clear the SEC's own analysis did not conclude XRP was a security. One of the... 
um, oh, one, the SEC would turn the memo over, and two, they would have informed Ripple. So again, let's read this one again, because this is actually a really critical point. So all the way back in June a couple years ago, 2018, SEC lawyers were writing a legal memo analyzing whether or not XRP was a security or not. And at that point, they didn't uh, kind of say, you know, sue them or go after them. They did not recommend to go after Ripple. It's clear the SEC's own analysis at that point, that in 2018, did not conclude XRP as security. Otherwise, they would have most likely told Ripple. And again, they would have most likely pursued some action at that point already. Or basically, um, I think the last part of the turning the memo over refers to the memo over to the judge right now to kind of go over and see that in 2018 they knew. But even then, and this is actually really funny, regardless of what the SEC proves they knew back then, if they didn't inform Ripple, how could they have known? And they could have made their own analysis, but if the market didn't know, on the June 14th, a day afterwards, Hinman's speech, the market absolutely viewed the speech as market guidance. And again, we've seen a, a dozen SEC people themselves talk about this speech as guidance, so it's obvious that it was. Attorneys Nancy Voitas and Wendy Moore participated in the SEC meetings and described its impact the best. If your platform is, highly, uh, is slightly more decentralized than ETH, you're free. Now, in the clip above, Voitas said, if you can do just a little bit better than ETH, you're golden. Now, Perkins Coy lawyers helped write the Hinman speech, and Wendy Moore, a lawyer for that firm, responded to Woj's comment with, then why isn't Ripple? We, of course, do not have an answer. Now, number seven, because Hinman only blessed Bitcoin and ETH in his speech on August 20th of 2018, Brad Gollinghouse and David Swartz met with Clayton and Hinman to discuss XRP. Brad informed them, Ripple is living in purgatory because we don't know what XRP is. You know, what is going on here? over XRP's lack of clarity. And then at the same meeting here, they didn't really have an answer for Ripple, which was um, maybe what he put in this tweet, which was unavailable now, not sure. Now the next month, September 2018, Garlinghouse met with Commissioner Ellen Roisman, which is what a lot of people are trying to get the notes from. During this meeting, um, it's not the Estabrook notes, but this is Ellen Roisman, my stupid, uh, it is the Estabrook notes. It's not the not the Estabrook notes. Sorry, guys. I'm sometimes, you know, sometimes English is very bad. Sorry, mother. During this meeting, not only did Roisman not inform Brad that the SEC considered XRP a security, Roisman made statements that gave Garlinghouse confidence that XRP wasn't viewed as a security. Roisman's lawyers, Estabrook, took notes. And during this meeting, claiming privilege, the SEC refuses to turn over these notes. And what we're thinking in that sense is, if... They concluded, yeah, XRP really looks like a security, then most likely they would have given it to the court as evidence straight away. But most likely there's either nothing inside these notes or some positive things for Ripple's side, which is why they don't want to hand them over. It should be noted, however, the SEC provided notes of other meetings between Garlinghouse and the SEC. The notes clearly corroborate Brad's testimony. The June, or sorry guys, January of 2019 Coinbase meeting with the SEC, Coinbase and its sophisticated security lawyers informed the SEC they determined today's XRP not to be a security and intended to list it unless the SEC disagreed. The SEC did not, and XRP was listed on Coinbase in February of 2019. In June of that year, the SEC allowed Ripple to acquire a 9% stake of MoneyGram. Ripple filed a notice with the SEC informing it about its intended use of XRP and MoneyGram. In short, the SEC knew Ripple would transfer XRP to MoneyGram, who would then sell it to retail holders via exchanges. The SEC now claims the XRP sold by MoneyGram to retail holders via exchanges are also sales of unregistered securities, which is an absolutely absurd argument. On December 4th, 2019, the Financial Stability Oversight Council's 2019 annual report is issued, which classifies XRP as a currency. Clayton, as chairman of the SEC, voted to approve the report and signed it, which once more just doesn't really make a lot of sense for them to come back on everything they've stated before. It just really doesn't. Again, guys, if you are enjoying this little summary of evidence and whatnot, make sure you press that like button to help the video out and comment down below when you think the lawsuit is going to be over or if you think Ripple's going to win or not. You know? In January of 2020 and 2021, after the lawsuit was filed as well, Baylord Inc., a money manager business and perfect example of what a market participant believed filed an ethics disclosure with the SEC. Baylord assured the SEC it would only trade the cryptos generally accepted by the market and by the SEC as currencies not subject to regulation by the SEC. The generally accepted currencies not regulated by the SEC are Bitcoin, Ether, and XRP. So, 
I've covered this a couple of times before, and what it basically refers to here is they had they, they basically wanted to put a couple cryptos in there that they thought were gonna be fine in any in any regard. And the SEC gave the stamp of approval basically when they regarded XRP as most likely fine. And all of a sudden they're trying to backtrack and say, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, point number 13 is gone for some reason. Not exactly sure what happened here if he had to like redo some of the tweets or just deleted them for some other reason. The SEC claims all ongoing sales of XRP are securities, but didn't issue a cease and desist against co-founder McCaleb, who has made over $2.6 billion in XRP sales since the lawsuit was filed. And McCaleb has made a billion dollar more than the SEC seeks against Ripple, which is kind of funny. Now, despite the absurd claim, each and every sale of XRP is legal. The SEC failed to seek a preliminary injunction. If the SEC truly believed today's XRP is a security, would it allow Ripple to engage in ongoing sales of unregistered securities to help pay Ripple's defenses? Of course not. That wouldn't make sense. Now, Brad Gollyhouse of Ripple executives like Stuart Alderoti and David Swartz met with leaders of the SEC, including the chairman, director of corporation finance, commissioners, and others, multiple times and was never informed XRP was a security, except for a meeting just prior to the lawsuit. I chose 16 facts off the top of my head to prove the SEC can't win this case as alleged. There's a multitude of other evidences like Giancarlo's um, op-ed concluding XRP was not a security, but the 16 facts standing alone should equal game over. Yeah, so that is huge, guys. That is huge. That is just absolutely huge. And then as like a little cherry on top of the pie. Jeremy Hogan also says this thread is just like a closing argument. It even has exhibits because it's going to be really hard for the SEC to kind of, and they most likely will, look at this and say to themselves, we're still going to win it, boys. We're still going to win it. I don't know how they can think this. I don't really know. I still doubt that the SEC has the real plan to win. Honestly, it just doesn't make sense. And here's again Eleanor Tourette kind of backing that up. Scoop. Turns out even staff at the SEC aren't confident they'll win the case against Ripple. A source close to the SEC tells me Hester Peirce has expressed privately she thinks the SEC will not get the outcome it is looking for. Oh. I just... Okay, my laptop stopped, stopped charging by accident. So, um, don't you realize that it was never about winning in the first place? Whatever Clayton said the day before he filed the lawsuit and left the SEC with his friends, I bet dollars to donuts it had to do with telling Gensler to drag this case out as long as possible. Maybe. Honestly, I, I don't really know why they sued him. The only reason I can think of is just to get some sort of grasp on the whole crypto system in for them the easiest way possible by letting a judge decide everything them just bringing up crazy arguments the judge being like what is this and then the judge deciding against the sec eventually but having set a basis for fair notice for crypto in the, in the future and you might actually eventually come out and see the sec was not actually doing a bad job right now everything is looking bad upon them but that's because it seems as if they're serious about this. Maybe we're all just taking it way too serious. The SEC is just kind of throwing something out there against Ripple to see what the judge will decide. You know, they don't really allege this. They're just trying some stuff and trying to form a basis for the regulation of crypto with no intent to actually win. But they had to kind of make it look that way. And right now they're backing out saying, hey, you know, we're going to lose a couple of cases. And, you know, because it, it really is not as serious as I would have expected. And again, guys, I am not a financial or legal advisor, but this really is such a crazy, it, it really feels like a show, the way we're watching this. At first, I was kind of scared, you know, the moment they got sued, I'm thinking, no way, what just happened? But the more the time has moved on, I'm, I'm like, I've turned from a, at the start, maybe like, so, let's say at the start, start I was like, ooh, okay, it's the SEC. I was like a 50-50. Then a couple days in when I started reading things, I was like, okay, it's like a 70-30. Now I'm like a 99 to 1% um, that ripple. I'm, I'm like, honestly, 100%, but there's always this little 1% of, of you know, doubt that you have somewhere. So I'm going to say 99 to 1 that ripple's just going to win this. And again, with my own risk to reward, I'm thinking the reward that we'd get if they win is most likely at least doubling in price, right? And there's almost no way they'd lose, so 
yeah, it's worth it to put my money into this. That's the way I see it. But yeah, that is just my own opinion, just my thoughts on the situation. Hopefully, you guys all enjoyed this video. And a reminder, higher exit price is always juicy. So uh, yeah.